All right. Well, thank you very much, uh, everybody, for joining uh, to our presentation today around um, uh, the peculiar topic of uh, the works, but no onions. Uh, Michelle, can you explain that title a little bit? You came up with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, basically, you're pressuring me a lot, and I was buying a sandwich last Sunday, and then, you know, I got this sandwich at this um, sandwich shop here, and it, and they have this sauce called the Works, and you're bugging me for the title, and I told the girl, hey, I'll, I'll have the Works and no onions, and that just rolled off my tongue so good that I'm like, we got to use it, so now, I, that's... Yeah. As a caveat, you are Brazilian, right? So um, that may not make sense to anybody else, but but anyhow, but that's, it is that's true. Um, uh, how to get the most out of your feed management program? How to get your best ROI? Uh, so um, so we'll talk about that. And uh, just as a real quick overview, if you guys are not that familiar with Milk Group, uh, we're a fairly recent company, a little over four years old. Um, and when it comes to feed management, we've been out with our one feed, cloud-based feed management software for 20 months. And in those 20 months, we've uh, enrolled 20, uh, 200 dairies, uh, a little over 300,000 cows. And um, uh, so really a lot of what we're talking about is the stuff that we've learned over the last 20 months in enrolling people and also monitoring them and, and see what are some of the things that you really have to do to get the most out of your feed management program, and then also some of the pitfalls that we see. Um, uh, Milk Group also does a lot of other things besides feed management. Uh, we have a lot of sensors for pulsation monitors. We have uh, sensors for the milk barn uh, that let you know if your wash failed or was successful. And so, um, uh, and then we also do uh, full employee training remotely uh, through a product called TrainTrack. So if you guys want to check us out, go to milkgroup.com and uh, you can look at our products and, and ask for more questions there. And of course, you can always ask us here or through email since you have all of our emails now. So, but uh, without any further ado, Michelle Baldwin, PhD nutritionist, who is basically over one feed and uh, not just an implementation, but also on the development side. Uh, uh, the floor is yours, Michelle. <laughs> ah, very good. Let me see um, if I can put this up on the screen, says the guy who works for a tech company. Give me a thumbs up if you can see the um, presentation. That's just like when I ask a you, customer. You, you got thumbs up. You got thumbs yeah. up. Okay, good. Yeah, no news, good news. Um, yeah, so, you know, we've been looking at what our customers, um, how they use, how they interact um, with feed management software for over two years now. And we've had a lot of people ask, you know, what's what's the formula, what's the secret, and what what to look for and what to avoid. So you came up with the great idea of putting together a little summary of what we see out there, which I think is pretty cool. And uh, again, despite the, the joke on the title and the, the non-existent metaphor, I feel like a lot of people are expecting some sort of metaphor, but I have to tell you, this sauce, the works, it works. <laughs> so um, I think a lot of the stuff we'll see here today works with just about any dairy. So that's that's uh, uh, my little uh, two cents on uh, if you come to San Luis Obispo and go to Kona's Deli, ask for the work sauce when you get your sanda. Okay, well, that's uh, a little bit of a detour. So, okay, here we are, done. <laughs> we can look at this and then adjourn. Um, so we we are in a very privileged position that we get to look at pretty much every single customer who does feed management software with us. 
And what that helps us is not only to enhance the product and then continue to work with them, but it also helps us gather knowledge to be able to pass that along to other users and new installs and even when we set, put together webinars like this. So we looked at um, within, like Raphael said, we're up to 200 and counting something dairies and sorted out a few that we know are doing really well. And uh, and by in and, and by doing really well, you can make your own assumption. You know, those those are well run, well managed dairies, and you know we get good feedback from them, and they're never complaining too much about the dairy industry being terrible. So we try to interact with them and sort out what they do really well. In some of these, we've been out there ourselves when we did installs and stuff. And and, and again, just to put this up front, it doesn't mean that these are large small, mid-sized. These are dairies of varying sizes. Uh, what are the things that they capitalize on? What do they do through feed management software to capitalize in and get return over investment? So we were able to place them in five buckets and we'll go over each one of these in more detail, but it's basically around accuracy and accuracy has a few other components within itself bunk management, time, and they prevent waste of ingredients and mixed feed and everything. And then they also interact a lot and utilize a lot of reporting, dashboarding, notifications, and those type of things. So here's the formula, if anybody is interested. Um, none of them are more important. No, none of them is more important than the other ones. They're basically all important. And some people do better in some of these areas, but the guys we see out there doing really well focus pretty much on all of them. And just to interject real quick, so we're not just talking about large dairies. Uh, our spread is really 300, 200, 300 cows milking up to 20,000 animals on feed. And mm -hmm. all of these parameters still apply. Uh, as, as you go through the individual things with uh, accuracy, bunk management, time, shrink, data analysis, uh, whether you're feeding 50 animals or 50,000, really the same principles apply, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, it's called the works. It works with just about anything. <laughs> there you go. All right, <laughs> All right show us okay. the <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so within within accuracy, um, we listed out four things that are really important, and I think uh, a lot of people think of this one right off the bat: uh, ingredient accuracy. Are we mixing the rations that were balanced? So when you talk about where the money is, one main point is let's close that gap between the ration formulated and the ration. Um, that the cows are consuming. And there are two processes in between. One is mixing and the other one is delivering. So um, you can see here, I'm using a, a, a little screenshot to demonstrate that there's all sorts of people out there and uh, feed management software does help you identify personalities uh, in point where strengths are as well as weaknesses. So just out of uh, our five feeders here, you can see we've got guys up there in the 98.4, and we've got guys much lower. Um, and everybody's using the same equipment. Everybody's mixing the same loads Everybody because they're on a rotation program. So there's no difference between equipment or type of rations being mixed. So it boils down to personality, attention to detail, those type of things. So if you look at this guy in particular, 98.1, almost two minutes two minutes quicker than this guy so not only quicker and uh, and more accurate so that's one thing uh and we can boil down you know the more you dive into mixing reports you can look at ingredient accuracy by user so that's a point where feed management software really helps unleash uh return on investment because again we're trying to close that gap between ration formulated and ration uh delivered yeah, and one of the things that we really believe is in is uh, transparency. So the feeders themselves can actually see how they're doing. They don't have to always go to the manager and print a report. They can go right on the app and see how am I performing and am I getting better or worse. Um, so that 
that's also seemed to really help with competitiveness and trying to do a good job and just giving them a tool to uh, to succeed with. Yeah, good point. Um, everything we're seeing here is stuff from users. We're, this is not what you and I think is best. So I'm just uh, capturing um, screenshots of users um, that, again, we believe are doing really well. Another thing that really relates to closing that gap between ration formulated and ration delivered is monitoring dry matters. We, again, have the luxury of looking at our customer's database for good and bad because we utilize that for support. We really um, are very proactive in that regard, but then we get to see how they interact with our product. And we have people out there who go months without changing a dry matter on a forage uh, versus other people who make a change every other week, weekly, or even within a few days, depending on how things go. So particularly important for forages, obviously, monitor dry matter because, again, some of those variations are real and they can inflict the discrepancy between the ration you think you're feeding and the actual ration that the cows are consuming. So ingredient dry matter, pretty important. People that uh, take advantage of feed management software to monitor uh, to measure, update the loads, and then monitor over time, uh, have a much better handle on uh, on those variations compared to, again, setting up a ration when you open a bag or a bunker and never looking at the dry matter again until you're done with that uh, forage. Yeah. Well, very good. The next one is obviously delivering the right amount of feed. Uh, we have a similar dashboard for drop accuracy. So uh, it becomes really important because it's not about what you mix oftentimes, or particularly when it comes to dry matter intake, it, it's about what the cows received. So drop accuracy is really important. We know farm equipment has inherent bias, and um, the more we can mitigate that, the better. So um, really important, we can see here, you know, it's not unusual to see a two, three percent error while dropping, and it's just the nature of, um, again, large wagons, speed, and all that. But even within your group of feeders, or if you're only one feeder, um, there's opportunities there to lower that. So that's uh, certainly going to help with um, uh, returns. And then the last one, uh, and this is pretty interesting, and this is direct from a um, uh, user, uh, how much money can be saved or unleashed, revenue can be unleashed through ingredient supply. So if you think about sourcing forages, let's begin with forages. Really important to have a good handle on your projected usage and how far you can stretch a pile, a bag, a bunker, and how much you will need for the next season, either purchased or planted uh, forages. So those guys, uh, and this has been reported again because we've got people who have already went through a couple seasons of harvesting and they say, you know, once we settled in with inventory and got a good handle on our projections, it has made the world of a difference for the, our forages first. And the second one is contracts. If you have a feed software, a product that can provide you really accurate projections and out of stock. Now you have a much better understanding of what your needs are and you can work with your broker, your feed mill supplier. And if you're locking in contracts, um, that's a good chunk of uh, revenue right there to be unleashed. Very good. And, but all of that, of course, in, uh, requires you to make pen count changes for pen feeding, right? To actually enter all your loads. Um, so interaction, and I think we'll see a common theme there. Frequent interaction results in higher ROI for sure. Very good. Yeah, um, that's that's uh, down the line, down the stream. Don't don't spoil the end of the movie. Um, hey, they have to hear it seven times, right? So, that's we we're, we'll start losing people soon if you if you tell what the end of the movie is. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna move on from accuracy, and uh, those are, again, just to highlight the four topics I think are really relevant. 
and uh, and again this is stuff that we got from users it's not me thinking that that's how it should go the next one is bunk management and uh, I I would like to start with this figure because I first want to have us look at some of the large swings that are oftentimes greater than what biology would be and then it makes it makes it really difficult to make decisions when you have lines like this. They keep bouncing all over the place. So you don't know if that was biological or if it's just inaccurate data. So to show you first what the reverse of capitalizing on good data is, here's an example. Now, if we look at some of these users that are reporting that they do really well and that they're doing really well, when you look at their dry matter intake data, the lines look a lot more like this. You know, straighter lines when it comes to dry matter, because dry matter intake is basically the one of the best measurements we can look at. Cows love consistency, things are going well, everything is going really well, and I have a list of things here on the left that relate to dry matter intake. And to get to a straight line like this, you not only need well-mixed feed, well-managed pen counts, managing refusals really tight, managing pen uh, amount drop through pen, going back to our drop accuracy. Uh, those need to be well-managed so that you don't end up with all those ups and downs. So that's not how cows behave. We know cows are creatures of habit. And uh, so is the dry matter intake unless we or the environment is inflicting uh, a major stress to see a change of you know ten to see a change of ten pounds in intake in a pen is just unrealistic unless we're making you know unless it's dropping months on rain and ninety five percent humidity and add another stress factor on top of that but uh usually we we shouldn't see big swings in dry matter intake so when we're looking when we're interacting with feed software and we're trying to address whether or not dry matter intake or bunk management for that matter is up to the task we're looking for straighter lines and then if lines aren't straight the first thing to go back in and check is how are we managing pen counts because again the feed management software takes into account pen counts and intake per cow to calculate load size and then back calculate dry matter intake per cow so Oftentimes, we see uh, users capitalizing on user interface and integrations to keep on top of pen counts. That way, the loads are appropriate for that pen, and uh, then we don't end up with a ton of refusals or shortage of refusals. Both things rep represent loss of return, and um, and then the amount, again, the amount per pen is always what it needs to be. And the last one here is obviously time of feeding, which is also um, something that the feed management software can help us with. Are we feeding our cows timely, fresh cows, uh, cows coming back from the parlor, do, do we have feed in front of them? So those things are all related to good bunk management and good dry matter intake. And um, if you talk to any nutritionist, we do believe that that's where the money is. If dry matter intakes are solid, then cows are doing well. <clears throat> Perfect. All right, so Google is telling me to look at notifications that are hidden on my screen. So what's the point of hiding notifications when Google notifies you that notifications are hidden? Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we can we can cut that off on the recording that we're sending to uh, National Geographic. By the way, this will be a series on National Geographic, um, farm farm animals. So we're basically done with bunk management. Be on top of pen counts, refusals, uh, in amount dropped per pen, and feed cows timely. That's what people say. This has made a difference for us when we started looking at those four things. Dry matter intake is just solid. Okay, next one is time, and um, time is money. <laughs> we can move on. Now, so 
I feel like this is one of the most overlooked places to unleash revenue. We're out there measuring 72 hour digestibility on corn silage and all that and balancing to the fourth decimal and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and then we just leave the tractor running for seven hours and, you know, our feeders out there wasting time and stuff. So when it comes to the cost of producing milk, feed is by far the most expensive. However, to mix feed, we inflict a lot of other costs. Employee time, machine time, machine lifespan, uh, fuel usage, especially now if you're mixing feed in California and you, you, you're buying fuel in California, good God. Um, so, okay, now that I took that out of my chest, um, <laughs> <laughs> let's look at let's look at one report from one of our customers. So this is a dairy in Texas where they were able to reduce what what we're calling here feeding crew time. So this includes everything here, the time that the feeders spend out there uh, in the feed center by an hour and thirty minutes per day. Okay. Now this is a, a large dairy. They mix fifty loads, two loaders, two stationary mixers two delivery trucks and a crew of four feeders rotating every day. So when you talk about um, the time it takes to mix and deliver loads, one thing that helped a lot was optimizing loads. And again, this is through feed management software. A good feed management software should help you optimize loads. And by that, I mean combining pins within a load to maximize load size and the routes that we drive around and deliver feed to pens. That cuts down employee time, fuel usage, equipment usage, increases equipment lifespan, and that's return. Right, and if you don't have feed management, you just really don't know exactly what's going on. It's really tough to optimize anything if you don't know what your employees are doing mm -hmm. at what time of day. And one other thing that from the previous, and you don't have to go back, but the bunk management, I've had people come up to me actually at Central Plains Dairy Expo, 600 cow dairy, and they're like, we just put this in, and it's literally saving us between seven and eight thousand dollars a month because we were way overfeeding because we weren't tracking to, uh, dry matters that delivered very well, and we were way overfeeding. We we're able to pull that back, lost zero production, but are buying uh, a lot less feed every month. So there's there's a lot to be made up on dairies that don't have feed management, but then also the ones that we're switching from existing feed management software, just because it's so easy to use, they end up shaving time off anyways, because uh, they don't have to mm -hmm. make mistakes. Yeah. A good point. Um, now, let me tell you something that, well, once I learned this, I started using it. And um, I, I, I told this story to a 700 cow dairy. And, um, and then the owner was like, well, you say that, but that's only applicable for those guys because they're milking 12,000. You know, they, it doesn't apply to me as much. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Let's run the mathematics here. So if you think of this, this is a lot of revenue being unleashed on a large dairy. Those things, employee time, fuel usage, and equipment time become more relevant on a smaller dairy. Because when you look uh, at a uh, at when you look at cost on a per cow basis or per pound of milk, a smaller dairy has a much higher fixed cost for mixing loads than a larger dairy. So if you work with smaller dairies and you think that ma ma uh, maximizing or minimizing employee time, fuel usage, and equipment usage is not as relevant because you're a small dairy, it's actually the opposite. The smaller the dairy, the more important it becomes. Uh, for us to to optimize those. Yeah, and that's been one of the things that's been exciting for us is that because we're low upfront cost, it's easy to install, easy to use. We've been able to bring this state of the art feed program to dairies of smaller sizes as well, not just the big ones, but so they can stay competitive as well. Anyway, sorry, I always have to put a plug in. Go for no, it. That's <laughs> Hey, you requested this webinar, so you run it the way, whatever way you want. 
uh, I'm your I'm your invited guest actually <laughs> or invited invited speaker. <laughs> okay, time is money. Let's go home with that. Um, so here is again um, one of the areas where we can quickly and easily unleash revenue. Again, being fortunate to walk around and see a lot of dairies, it gives us a perspective, a much broader perspective on all sorts of uh, feed center setups and how people handle their um, their stuff. So what what we did here is we dug in the database and pulled a handful of dairies from each region, and I put I put the states there to represent the region. But the point here is not to focus on you know what people are paying for their rations. Uh, the point here is to acknowledge that feed is expensive. And if anything, it's getting more and more expensive. So if you just look at the regular high milk cow ration, far off, dry, breeding heifers, you know, those are the average prices across the country. Again, the ultimate goal here is, here is to tell us that we're spending a lot of money mixing feed. We've put together a ballpark number, and this holds true pretty much across the board. For every 1,000 animals, a dairy is spending close to $1.5 million per year. And this is assuming 50% milk cows and the other 50% between far off and, or, or dry cows and young stock. Now, those numbers will change up and down depending on if we have more or less milking cows, blah, blah, blah. But again, the point here is to realize that for every 1,000 animals, if you want to put a ballpark on it, it's a lot of money. Now, I just want to, so the, the table that you're showing, uh, Michelle, that's data that's coming out of the feed management software. So these are yeah. actual dairies. This is not taken up some yeah. national, whatever. Yeah, I, you know, it, it varies here. I think I took seven or eight here, seven or eight. I tried to get a handful of dairies in each state and average right. their ration costs. I dug in and looked for high milk cow rations far off in breeding. So those are true numbers whether or not you criticize the, the nutritionist for paying or for balancing the ration in wisconsin by that much but that's an average of several dairies actually meaning that there there is a, above and below that number so it's it's a number to tell us where the rations are and again the message here is no matter what we're going to be spending a lot of money with feed with feed ingredients because we're trying to talk about how do we unleash revenue from ingredient shrink and wasted feed well, once again, I want to start with the opposite. So I could put up a couple photos of dairies that have a really nice seed center and blah, blah, blah. But I think that doesn't solidify the message as good as something like this. You know, this is a place that goes through two very important seasons. One is a rainy winter and the other one is a, a windy summer. So we're we're talking about money either um, flying away off of your commodities or just run off. So this is basically, and again, I hope we don't need feed management software to to determine that there's money being lost here. What I actually wanted to to emphasize more is feed management software can help unleash revenue for those scenarios where it's hard to identify shrink and more importantly, quantify shrink. So if we're talking about purchased feed, mixed uh, premixes, uh, you know, dry ingredients, canola, those type of things, oftentimes it's hard to see half a ton disappear every month. Or, you know, in a smaller dairy, if you lose 400, 500 pounds of something that you're paying $2,500 a ton, that's, that's really hurts the bottom lines. When you have feed software, you log in, and I'm gonna put this up because here is where the secret is. So you ask people, how have you utilized or what has inventory done to you? And they'll, the ones that are capitalizing on it will tell you, well, it has helped us identify and, and uh, address ingredient shrink as well as wasted feed. And by wasted feed, I mean the, the mixed GMR that you're losing every day or uh, overfeeding, dumping the extra in the manure pile. So if we just focus on ingredient shrink, those dairies that are doing really well will tell you, well, what really helped was quality and timely inventory entries. 
meaning that the earlier you make that entry in inventory, if you bought a load of canola, a load of us or whatever, you make those entries uh, in inventory and you're you're trying to be as timely and as accurate as possible with cost, dry matter, and all that. And I think the other 50% that they will tell you is once we made sure that every single mixed load was run through the feed software, things just started getting better. If you think of ingredient shrink is basically the amount that disappeared from received and used. Well, if your loads, if you have missing loads, aborted loads, imaginary loads that never made through the feed software, the usage side of things are just not going to match up. So the secret again is on the entry side of things, be really good and then make sure every single load mixed is run through the feed software. Very good. I just came up with a great story for the time one, but uh, go ahead. Well, I'll bring it in later on. <laughs> you'll, you'll keep you'll keep us in suspense. There you go. Yeah. Um, so that's that's that for ingredient shrink and wasted feed. Um, people will tell you we had to be more careful with our entries, and again. When you're looking at the amount of loads made every day, it needs to go through the feed software. Now the last one, which is data analysis, and by that we could we could break it down into notifications, dashboards, and reports. There are several levels of um, analyzing data. If anything we have to establish what are the metrics we're looking for and then keep an eye on them. Without the ability to look at things over time, we will never be able to improve any one of those previous four that we talked about because if I don't know where I was or where we were before, I don't know if where we are at today is any better or worse than where we were. So. Historical data plays a big role, um, and and we've we've been uh, hearing this more and more. Once you establish your reports, your alerts, your notifications for every one of these areas, because you can, then it makes you go from a reactive management style, meaning that by the time we lose five pounds of milk, we'll go and check what happened. Those those really well managed dairies go from I was reactive and now I'm proactive. I know that the way things are going based on my reports and based on my um, analysis, my analytics, I can address that much quicker. So if you see back to our accuracy, if you see a feeder down in accuracy, now you have the tools provided through your feed management software to go and talk with that person. Why are we seeing accuracy much lower for you when you utilize the same load or the same mixer and you mix the same loads? Again, we're seeing the dry matter intake lines up and down through our reports. We can go back and address herd management crew. Are we on top of pen counts? Can we look at refusals? Where are we at with that? What's causing that? You know, Granted that those are not environmental effects, um, or you can go and see, are those environmental effects or are those um, inaccurate point, data points created by us? Again, I already said time is money. I think there's a lot of revenue to be uh, unleashed through um, just better mixing feed. In term, and by better, I mean quicker and, um, and saving equipment time, employee time, and fuel usage, fuel usage. And I think the photo described that. If you're anywhere close to, to that photo with ingredient shrink, there's no way. You know, we keep struggling to get another half pound of milk and uh, we lose half a ton of canola every load. So, so, so I don't know why. Yeah, I pick so. on canola, poor canola. The, the canola council board uh, already reached out to me. Cool. Um, one of the really fun stories was actually our European install in Italy um, around the time management piece. They were already feeding really accurately. They just had zero tracking, right? And when I when I helped them install this, 
they would start out feeding in the middle of the farm and then literally drive to the very other end to some silos, vertical silos mm -hmm. to get some stuff in, and then turn around and go past the initial place to the very other end of the farm to get some more silage and then even further to get more silage. And I was just like, holy crap, dude, you're putting in a lot of miles, right, with the self-loader. And mm -hmm. about, I think, six months or so into using our software, he's finally like, man, I spend a lot of time driving. So they're actually, you know, changing where they're locating all their feed now because they see how much they're losing. But it's it, it never becomes real unless it's really in front of you. It's like, this is literally what you've been doing. And so there's a lot of the, the value there. But one question I got for you, Michelle, though. So these are a lot of pieces, right? Data analysis pulls it all together. That's uh -huh. how it things. But who the, the dairies are successful with this who takes care of what okay well very good i will have to segue into the next slide to answer your question uh because i would turn that into a pitfall so okay. um you again we talked about what we hear from uh users that say we're doing really well things are going really well and uh we asked them how to utilize your feed management software. So everything we've seen so far is documentation from actual users. Now, at the same time, you can't really call someone and say, hey, you know, I, I see you struggling. <laughs> what do you do incorrectly? So some of these are observations from us because we interact with a lot of people. So we've sorted out a few things that we see people getting stuck. And uh, just like anyone else, we've lost, I don't know, three, four customers. and. Some of those were because of the pitfalls. They just hit a pitfall and could not get past. So um, then we 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 saved that information. The first, and I, uh, we're gonna list some pitfalls here. They are not ranked more important to less important. They're all important. So um, let's just start with assuming that they're all important. The first one goes back to what you said, Raphael. The first common pitfall is there's just not enough engagement. I have a lot of people out there, or we have a lot of customers out there who buy feed management software just like they're getting a permit to operate their dairy. They get it, they put it there, like, well, now we're allowed to milk cows, we've got feed management software. Feed management software is not a license for you to run your dairy. It's a tool, a management tool. So the more you engage with it, the better. And if you look at some of people who complain about, I don't get any money off of my feed management software, it's usually uh, people who don't engage with it enough. Yeah, and some it's, of the extreme examples are no dry matter adjustment going to the pen for three months. That doesn't yeah. work, that, that no dairy can run that way. Yeah, so, so everything, yeah, everything we talked about so far, yeah, so. including calling us to complain that is also engagement <laughs> the more people the more people call us it means they're interacting with the product so even though i like no news good news sometimes no news is scary uh well, actually as a segue there we actually really like it when you call us to because there's an issue because sometimes we can actually make the program better because you've uncovered something that maybe we could improve on a lot of times it's just, okay, let's go back and reteach you or show you how to do this again, um, which is more often than not is the case. But, but um, we have learned the reason why we've had 14 major updates on our feed management since we launched it 20 months ago is because we keep making it better. And I would say over half of those are coming from uh, uh, recommendations that we're getting from our current customers. So. We love it when people call us and quote unquote complain because it usually makes us better, right? So Yeah, good point. Now another pitfall that we see a lot out there is um lack of motivation to learn. Um this one we we try to solve this one through friendlier user interface and, and make very intuitive products. Nonetheless, there's this still a learning curve, just like with anything else. So that becomes a major problem when usually up in the management side of things, uh, 
people want to outsource the learning part. So you as the person on top of the pyramid, you have to know things because of employee turnover and, and reliability and all sorts of things. So if we've got someone up the chain who doesn't even know what the product looks like, that's bound to fail. To, to, to fail. Or at least so, full buy-in, right? Full buy-in. Yeah, correct. And, and there's nothing wrong with, with assigning people to different positions. But if you have a feed manager quit and now you are completely in the dark with your feed management product, that is not a good thing. So everybody within the, the the group of people handling feed management software should have a minimum level of knowledge of things and in, in how to, to make the baby survive if needed or to keep the baby alive. Uh, this, is, this is a good one and uh, I'm not gonna touch too much on, on this one because we all deal with people and we know people don't like changing too much. Uh, we, we've lost a, a really good customer uh, just because when you, when you measure things, feed management software is going to expose weaknesses. And if you're not willing to change, then sometimes it's best to just n not know. And then you move on with life. But if you have something that keeps hitting you in the face and telling you, if we don't change this, then it's going to be hard to make it work. Then you have to to change things. So we, uh, this is a, a difficult word for a non-American to pronounce. Unwillingness to change. That is a major pitfall. And then the last one that finally answers your question, Raphael, is... Uh, and I would say this is probably the most important one. Someone needs to drive the bus. And I think I coined, I coined this term, the bus driver for feed management software. So if you're out there, uh, quote me. <laughs> um, it's, again, it, it's not the person who purchased. It's the person who keeps the baby alive every day. Someone within the organization needs to hold team members accountable needs to keep an eye on notifications dashboard uh, because again money is on acting quickly if we got to the end of the month and we figured out that we lost money we're late for the party so as much as this is a pitfall it's a strength from the there is doing really well they have someone who grabs the torch and runs with it it's a feed manager of some sort. It's a manager of some sort, a really good feeder within the feeding crew or the owner, for that matter, if, it, if it's a small dairy. The owner needs to own feed management software as one of the important components of, uh, of the dairy. So, uh, and I think it's fair to say you, can have, you have to have, on a larger operation for sure, multiple bus drivers, right? Yeah, that's true. Well, um, go back to the slide before and give us some examples of who's the bus driver in those separate areas. Correct. So there, there are different players here. So let me give you examples because, again, we get to see people setting up their feed management program in different ways. Accuracy, you're talking about mixing, delivering, uh, and all that, and dropping feed. So that could be your feeder himself or, or within someone within your uh, your or a group of feeders, keeping an eye on that, keeping your, your team members accountable. We talked about the positive um, competition between people when they see their accuracy relative to their peers. Bunk management, um, we see sometimes the managers or uh, the feeders themselves in the, in the morning, uh, doing bunk calls and measuring the fuel zones. And, and oftentimes you can pull your herd management crew here as well. The beauty of cloud-based technology is you could have your herd management crew helping the feed management crew because now pen counts go straight into your feed management program. So, program. so it's not uncommon to have herd management crew helping with this. Time, I think um, you talk to any feeder, all they want to do is go home early. So. It's a little bit of a balance there, but uh, you as a um, owner, person responsible, needs to define what is the appropriate amount of time we can um, 
utilize for mixing feed before it starts to become wasteful. So this is a little more refined of a measurement um, in, in, in an analysis in that capacity. So this is probably upper management. And then ingredient shrink, um, hopefully you have some sort of accounting person helping or um, um, office admin or yourself if you're a smaller um, dairy and you're putting in those numbers yourself. Nutritionists play a big role here as well because you can help, you know, we usually are a, a little more comfortable with numbers. So running the numbers here uh, is oftentimes uh, helped by consultants. So good, good place for, and I, I hear as well. So I forgot to say, you know, consultants also help with keeping everybody accountable when it comes to accuracy. Yeah, and then the data analysis, I guess that's really the owner, consultant. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's that's probably the most refined one, and uh, and and this is a call for all consultants out there. We have to help with that. Uh, we have to keep an eye on numbers. We have lots of tools to help consultants keep an eye on numbers. So that uh, hopefully is done by the management, the upper management crew with consultants, and by consultants I put everybody in the same bucket. And you know, nutritionists, veterinarians, accounting people. So hopefully you get some sort of support up there. Very good. Well, now um, here is the question that I, <laughs> if if you got to this point and you don't have the answer to this question, then uh, we did a really poor job. But this is where we started from. How do I get my ROI from feed management software? I have a really good answer. Just sell it. Sell the hardware. It's a seller's market. <laughs> there is oh, a big being expensive. There, yeah, there so. is a big <laughs> shortage of uh, semiconductors. So just sell it. They'll, they'll make cars with it. Uh, so um, if you don't want to take that route, nonetheless, then um, I think we need to boil it down to everything we've been pounding on. You talk to people who capitalize on feed management software, the level of interaction with the product is just that much higher than people who say, well, this I don't even know if this works or not. So the answer is use it a lot, use all parts of it. We have several tools, Every for that matter, feed management software in general does a good job at helping you manage the bunk, uh, mixing loads, keep track of ingredient usage and hopefully a decent job with reporting. So interaction, I think, is the uh, number one feedback we get from users. The more we interact with this thing, the more revenue it unleashes. It's not that it's going to generate revenue on its own. It needs to be utilized as a tool to generate revenue. Yeah, and I think one part that maybe people might not associate with what is part of the software, but that is, the support team is one part of that. Utilize the support team. You know, you're not sure on how to use inventory. Get on a call with us and we'll make sure we get it set up the way it works for you, right? So there's um, there's a lot of, uh, and that's always available 24 seven, right? And it's obviously it's not just us, but any feed management software, you really have to use it to as much as you can and keep learning because they also keep changing, right? We, keep adding mm -hmm. things, we keep making it better. So you do have to stay engaged. So um, it's a pretty straightforward, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so <laughs> uh, do you guys have any questions for Michelle or myself? Not only questions, let, let give them a little more freedom. Criticism, comment. There you go. <laughs> I I don't know if you have to unmute people. Rodolfo has a question, or I yeah. hopefully he's able to unmute himself. Yes. Uh, in your experience, Michelle, uh, many customers have asked me this before. Uh, how how much time do they need to spend with a feed management solution before they start seeing the return of investment? Because that's that's a very frequent question, you know. Uh, I've been working with other solutions. Now I came to the to the good side, the great side with with you guys. Uh, but they're always complaining about how expensive it is. You know, 
I know this is not the case here, but still, it's gonna be a question. It's gonna be that's gonna be asked all the time. You know, do you have in your experience what's the return of in, uh, how long does it take for the for the customer to really appreciate the the return of investment? Well, that that is a really good point, and I appreciate you bringing it up. And now I feel bad that we didn't bring that up early on, but thanks for for saying that. Let me make an analogy. It's almost like dieting or trying to lose weight. It's not one of those things. So think of you have mycotoxins in your feed or something. You put in a binder, you almost see results within a few days. Repro, you have some sort of disease, you give a, a protocol, a, a shot protocol, you fix that. So some of those things are a lot easier to deal with because they, they yield a response immediately. Losing weight or becoming fitter for that matter, it's similar to uh, getting return over on investment from your feed management software. It's a very slow curve and it takes time. Now, one could say, well, if you go from that, uh, if you saved time, you know, that's within a week. You can start seeing those returns. If you mix loads much faster and you're much more accurate, now you're picking up a pound of milk, half a pound of milk because you're just feeding more timely, more accurately. Those returns are much quicker than, let's say, working through a feeder, for example. You start seeing bad accuracy, then you start working on more accuracy and mixing more accurately, calling the bunks more accurately. So that is a process that may take a month, two months. So some of those things really take time for us to start seeing, uh, which is sometimes frustrating because people give up too early. So I would say within the five, the four things we talked about, mixing accuracy, bunk management, um, uh, uh, ingredient shrink in time, ingredient shrink is one that you can identify pretty quickly, but it's hard to fix. You know, you need to build a new feed center. or build, So those those may take a little longer. Um, mixing accuracy and bunk management usually relates to people, so it, it relates to training. So those responses are a little uh, slower. I would say time is the shortest one that you can see within weeks or so, but most of them are going to take over a couple of months so that you have, you know, enough data to make a good decision. Yeah, just to piggyback on that, we do have a lot of testimonials that it's the payback happens in the first week or two because they just didn't know how much they were wasting. And you identify that. And I mean, the the ROI happens before they ever paid a bill for the hardware a lot of times. So it's um, it can be very, very quick, especially if you haven't had feed management programs before. Um, now, it's it's probably a little bit more gradual process. If you're already in a feed management program and then you come to ours, um, or you just switch to any other one, uh, there's probably there's a gradual improvement there. Um, but um, but we have a lot of stories where they're like, well, that's a no-brainer. That thing paid for itself before the bill was due. So uh -huh. yeah, really good point. Any other questions? Cool. Well, we, we do have. Let's let's just drop this out there because um, we do have a uh, return on investment calculator. So if anybody is interested, um, it it's super flexible. It allows you to play with the numbers and um, and uh, Rodolfo to help you. We tend to look at those things on a yearly basis. So you put that within a, a one year because that's where the numbers start to make a little more sense. Um, you know, if I saved, you know, half an hour of one feeder per day, I'm paying $15 per hour. That's, you know, not enough money for me to see in a week. You know, I saved a, a six pack of beer in a week. But when you compile over time, it, it becomes a little more relevant. So we have that. It runs on a 365 time frame basis. Put down your feed costs, put down a few other things, and uh, it'll tell you at the bottom what the expected return on investment is. Um, it, tap, it, it, it looks at a few of the things we talked about, uh, ingredient shrink, uh, mixing accuracy, those type of things. So pretty, pretty I can, nice. I can email that out to attendees. So. Yeah, pretty nice tool. Um, like I said, allows you to put whatever numbers you want down and um, 
and then we'll crunch the numbers for you. Perfect. Cool. So there's no other questions. Let's close. But um, just remember us when you look at feed management, we get dairies up and running remotely. It's 2000 bucks up front for a lot of installs um, and a, a very manageable monthly subscription with full 24-7 uh, tech support trilingual um, so that uh, we can really address any concerns really quickly in real time. Um, so if there's no other questions, thank you again very much for joining and um, we'll see you out there.